Good evening and welcome to this regular meeting for Tuesday, March 15th, 2022. Everybody can please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, please. Mr. Grigsby, here. Mrs. McCarthy, here. Mrs. Saxon, here. Mrs. Tamira, here. Mrs. Vaca, here. Finalization of the agenda. Is there anything to add and or delete? The agenda is final as presented. Thank you. It is recommended that the Board of Education approve the written summary of the regular minutes for meetings on February 1st, 2022 and February 14th, 2022. Move. Second. Moved by Ms. Tamira, second by Ms. McCarthy. Roll call, please. Mrs. Tamira? Yes. Mrs. McCarthy? Yes. Mr. Grigsby? Yes. Mrs. Saxon? Yes. Mr. Vaca? Yes. Right, we'll move right into the superintendent treasurer's report. Okay, well, like the beautiful spring day outside, bringing us much excitement. We have more excitement here tonight at our board meeting to recognize our March students of the month. And I'd like to kick that off with Andrea Vance from ACLC. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. I have the pleasure tonight of introducing our first student of the month. Uh, we have Jackson Coral, and uh, Jackson is our preschooler who is in Miss Pandy's classroom. And I saw Jackson's family on there, so cool. Um, so Jackson, uh, Miss Pandy says that Jackson has shown so much growth with his, with his expressive skills, and this has helped him to be able to communicate more clearly with others. Jackson is so happy that he can talk with his friends, and therefore has established some really nice relationships. He is becoming much more independent in his daily routine and tries his best. Jackson has progressed with attending to his classwork and he puts forth so much effort in following through with his task in a positive manner. Jackson also likes to be a helper and has been earning Brewster Paws for, such, for being such a good helper. Way to go, Jackson. And the next student of the month I'd like to introduce <coughs> is Brendan Jennings. And I also saw Brendan's family and it looked like you guys were enjoying the park. So I'm a little jealous. <laughs> um, Brendan is in Ms. Rogers kindergarten classroom. And Ms. Rogers says that Brendan is a joy to have in class. He goes above and beyond to be Ranger strong. He is an amazing peer role model and goes out of his way to help his friends. He tries his best, follows the school rules and always has a smile on his face. We are so proud of you. Keep up the amazing work. Congratulations. And next, I'd like to introduce Mr. Hepburn from Liberty. Hello, everyone. My name is Mitch Hepburn. I'm the principal at Liberty Elementary, and it's my pleasure to introduce our two students of the month that have demonstrated Ranger Strong attributes. Our first student of the month is Sophia Gunn. And she was nominated by Mrs. Kacherik. And this is what Mrs. Kacherik has to say. Sophia has grown leaps and bounds in class this year. I am so proud of the hard work that she demonstrates on a daily basis. And she always sets a good example for all her peers. She loves to help others when in need and is a friend to all. We are so lucky to have Sophia in our class. Excellent job, Sophia. Our next student of the month is Carter Massey. And Carter was nominated by Mrs. Hetzler. And this is what Mrs. Hetzler has to say. Carter is a very kind and is always including others and checking in on them to make sure that they are not having any problems with schoolwork. We are very proud of him. And we are also very proud of his effort that he puts into his academics. Awesome job. Carter. And it is my pleasure to introduce Chuck Maurer from Henry. I'm Mr. Maurer, Assistant Principal at the Academic Center, and it's my privilege to recognize our four students of the month. First, we have Michaela Ratton from eighth grade. The eighth grade TL teachers are proud to select Michaela as our student of the month. She comes to school each and every day with a positive attitude and a willingness to learn. 
She demonstrates all of the traits involved with being a successful student, which includes showing respect for her peers and teachers, being responsible for her actions, and giving the best effort on tasks she is asked to complete. She truly leads by example and is a great asset to 8 Teal. Keep up the great work, Michaela. Our next student is Cambry Kerr from seventh grade. The seventh grade has selected Cambry Kerr as her student of the month. Cambria has displayed many characteristics of Ranger Strong. She is a young lady who shows pride in her schoolwork. She, is, she has gone above and beyond her expectations on classroom assignments and assessments. Cambria is a definite asset in and out of our studio. Keep up the great work, Cambria, and continue to stay Ranger Strong. Our next student is Connor Wilson from fifth grade. Connor is an excellent role model for all students. He is respectful to his peers and teachers. He is reliable. We can always count on him to try his hardest and to have his work completed. He is very respectful and well-mannered. He shows Ranger strong qualities each and every day. We absolutely love having Connor in our studio. Keep up the great work, Connor. And next we have John, John Hofstetter, a third grade student in the Orange Studio. The Orange Studio is very proud to select John as our student of the month. John is being recognized for his hard work, perseverance, and grit. John is a conscientious, conscientious kind, caring, motivated, and polite student. He sets goals and works very hard to achieve them. He is kind to others. He is truly an asset to the classroom. And he exemplifies what it means to be Ranger Strong. Keep shooting for the stars, John. Congratulations to our four students. And now I pass it over to Ms. Durkin from High Tech Academy. I apologize, my shoe just broke. No. Oh, sorry. <laughs> But I am very excited to be here today to announce our two learners of the month from Ranger High Tech Academy. And we actually have learners who are on the opposite ends of the spectrum here. We have a second grader and an 11th grader that we are going to be recognizing today. So our second grade student of the month is Pearl Hockey. Um, Pearl was nominated by Coach Mossberger. She is always showing respect and kindness to others around her. She shows respect to her coaches by listening and following directions. And to her classmates, she is always speaking kindly to them and making sure that everyone is included. Keep up the great work, Pearl. Um, we are all very proud of you. And then our 11th grade student of the month who has been nominated is Nick Gardner. And he was nominated by um, Ms. Freeman. This year, Nick is taking almost all of his classes College Credit Plus. When he is not in class, he is volunteering his time at RHTA, working with younger students, helping with dismissal, teaching kids how to use the equipment in the fab lab, supporting kids at lunch and recess, and doing many projects around the school. Nick took on the role of creating the centerpieces for the State of North Ridgeville event, and also was a wonderful representation of STEM at the RHTA Community Open House. We are very lucky to have a high school student who is so dedicated and giving up their time back to our school. So congratulations, Pearl and Nick. And now I would like to um, introduce Ms. Lormo from the high school to give her students a mic. Hello, how's everyone doing? Hello. Yes. Uh, so, uh, the first student is Lucas Worrinen. Uh, Lucas is a great choice for March's Student of the Month. This nominating teacher, Mrs. Morales, wrote, Lucas is a role model, both in the classroom and out of the classroom. He is constantly a leader for the track team and is always setting a good example. This past week, Lucas encouraged the entire distance squad to cheer for the unified sports basketball game. And then he made it a point to go and congratulate each and every player after the game. His kind heart and inclusive method of are prime examples as to why Lucas deserves to be student of the month. Uh, Lucas, a senior, has followed a well-rounded curriculum during his time at NRHS, taking advantage of many honors courses and CCP offerings, all while maintaining an impressively high GPA. Lucas has played basketball and participated in track and field. Lucas plans to attend Grand Valley State in Michigan to study nursing, and he would like to eventually become a nurse anesthetist. His spirit animal is a leopard. He says they are stealthy and quiet. I can surprise you. <laughs> that was a good choice for him, and I am proud to highlight him as one of our senior students of the month. 
But then I found out these two are best friends. <laughs> Alejandro and Davila. Davila, hope I said that right. Alejandro is a great choice for March's student of the month. Alejandro's teacher selected him, saying Alejandro is very hardworking and kind. On the track team, he has established himself as a leader in the way that he leads his teammates. He always includes everyone and goes out of his way to make sure that everyone feels included. Another teacher offered, Alejandro is such a great kid. He's hardworking, determined, polite, respectful, kind, and he puts forth 100% effort all the time and does so with a positive attitude. Alejandro has also followed a very well-rounded curriculum during his time here, exploring everything from AP Lit, culinary fundamentals, to engineering technology. He has been accepted uh, to Cleveland State, where he's also going to study nursing um, or finance, he said. He said his spirit animal is a polar bear because he's very welcoming and he loves everyone. Uh, proud to highlight these two as our March students of work. Thank you all for that. Those were some exciting choices this month. Uh, and now I'd like to turn it over to Annie Hostetler to introduce our staff members for the month of March. Good evening, everybody. On behalf of the Board of Education, it is my pleasure to congratulate two staff members for their positive impact on our district. Their selection is based on input from their colleagues as to why they are deserving of this recognition. And I am proud to announce Rachel Maxwell and Gina Jaworski as the March staff members of the month. Mrs. Maxwell was hired in June of 2019 to teach at Ranger High Tech Academy. The previous year, she was a leave replacement for us at the academic center. And prior to coming to North Ridgeville, Mrs. Maxwell was a Title I tutor at Streetsburg. During her career here, she has been actively involved in our district. She has served on the building leadership team at RHTA and has worked on writing curriculum and tutoring our students in math. Rachel's nominator stated the following about why she is a perfect candidate to be selected as the March staff member of the month. Rachel is an outstanding educator. She is a true leader in our building and, a, and an example for all. Her kindness and dedication shows that she is always selflessly trying to improve the culture and learning at RHTA. Overall, Rachel is a creative and talented person who brings joy and excitement to our school. Congratulations, Rachel, for being selected as the March Staff Member of the Month. The North Ridgeville City Schools are very appreciative of your commitment to educating our seventh graders at RHTA. Next, I would like to recognize our Support Staff Member of the Month, Ms. Gina Jaworski. Mrs. Jaworski was hired in August of 2018 as a paraprofessional media technician at Ranger High Tech Academy. Prior to coming to North Ridgeville, Ms. Jaworski managed a home child care center and also worked as a fitness instructor and health coach. The following is what Gina's nomination said about why she is so deserving as being recognized as our March staff member of the month. Gina is so enthusiastic for the learners at RHTA. She always has a smile on her face and is so patient with her classes. When Gina is not working in the media center, she helps out all over the school. Gina is so willing to lend a hand wherever there is a need and does so with genuine kindness. I also know firsthand um, with our staffing shortages this year, how important Gina has been. Um, it, you know, it's been an enormous help at RHTA for us this year. So on behalf of the Board of Education and North Ridgeville City Schools, we congratulate Rachel Maxwell and Gina Jaworski for being selected as the March staff members of the month. You are two great examples of the many wonderful staff that we have here in our district. Before we turn it over to our building report this month, which is very exciting, I do want to once again congratulate our students and our staff members of the month. You all make North Ridgeville proud and we are so very fortunate to be able to work with you and uh, teach you every single day. So thank you staff and students. And now we are Brewster would like to share a little bit with the board about what great things are happening at Ranger Academy as well as our JBS and some of the great things that she's been doing in her role uh, this year. 
Hi, good evening, everybody. It's nice to see you. Um, yeah, I have a few things to discuss. I am excited to share some of the new things that we've been able to put into place this year, um, thanks to you supporting me in this program. Um, today, I wanted to focus, oftentimes I focus on our mission statement, but today I really wanted to focus on our vision. Um, it, clearly, Ranger Strong, I always have to throw that in there. That's where it all comes from, and that's our vision, and that's our core values. Um, but our, our vision statement, I think, is what really defines this position and what we're trying to do with our students this year, um, empowering students to design their preferred future. And that's been my focus. I think that's the focus of the district. Um, and there's so many opportunities in COVID, as difficult as it was for us, it also has been um, taught us a lot and helped us make changes that have really helped helped find that preferred future for our students. Um, I wanted to start with um, planning for our students' futures and some of the things that we've implemented this year. Um, Jamie and I have been working to create the graduation plans for our high school students, but we also brought that down to eighth grade and we're gonna take that down to seventh grade as well. Uh, and it's important that they, those are the, those middle school students that I know and love very much and miss them um, day to day, but I'm enjoying seeing them growing up in the high school. Uh, but they, they are the ones that really are thirsting for that information and they wanna see what's out there for me um, and they, they think about their future. And the high school students are kind of like too cool to think about their future. So we really need to catch them young. Um, and that's, that's what we're trying to do through this. Uh, so the looking at the four E's and I'll talk a little bit about the future fair in a minute. Um, we're also continuing our partnership with the Loring County JBS for our high school students and talking to our eighth grade students and the JBS is expanding the opportunities and the amount of students and enrollment that we can take. So that's good. We have a lot of students interested and we want those students that that works for that it's definitely an avenue for them to continue their career based um, you know, what they want to do in their career and put them on their path. And I'm really excited. We took over 60 students about, I think it was in February. They had a great opportunity, saw all the labs, and we're fostering that relationship with the JBS and working collaboratively to work with them to meet our needs. We have students that are recovering some of their classes here that are full-time JBS students, really working with them to make sure our students are graduate on time. Um, we're also working with the four E's and all the experiences, some of the experiences that we put into place, working with our HTA and the high school to develop some internships for our students and building those business partnerships. We did a pilot program with Sam's Club. Um, we're working with some manufacturing and healthcare organizations with internships. COVID has made it difficult. A lot of, especially the healthcare, are still very locked down on letting, letting students in the healthcare um, avenue, but we're, we're pursuing it. Um, we're trying we're implementing programs and planning a lot more for next year the lcc flex factor which um, our hta did we had some high school students go over do it we have some eighth grade students doing the flex factor which is designing a product uh, and seeing it through they have many flex factors they have long flex factors over a semester and then we had a group in the high school go for just an afternoon to work on design and product implementation and those types um, we sent some students to a manufacturing and technology conference in the fall of downtown Cleveland. Um, Todd Bebb took some students. We're working on shadowing. We've had shadowing opportunities for students. Um, and an event coming up next week for seventh grade is the Amazing Shake, uh, which is a soft skills event that the, um, no, the Academic Center has put together. All of our seventh grade studios have been learning. I've gone in and talked to them about interviewing and how to shake hands and how to meet people and how to look people in the eye. So that is culminating next Thursday. We're really excited. We have all kinds of volunteers coming in. I'm sure you've heard about it to um, test, quiz the kids. And there's all these stations and they're gonna have to show that they can talk, shake hands, order from a menu, call in the telephone. Um, so it's, it, and it's something that all these businesses, as I go out and talk to businesses, are telling me that these kids just don't have the soft skills. And COVID clearly set us back with that. So that's next week. And then, of course, as you know, we had the Future Fair um, a couple weeks ago. And that was a huge success. And we're, we're, we've already started planning it for next year and have, have had a great response from the vendors and the, clearly the colleges and the armed forces that were there. And we also are looking into doing a future day for our young kids, for our younger students too, to, to start having them understand these careers. But this was open to six through 12. Um, we had students from all grades. It worked out beautifully because we had the conferences at both NREC were rescheduled because of the snow days. So we had that 
group coming as well. Um, and we had a, a great response in that there's a link there, you need to pull it, but all the people were there. But I have all the people that did attend. It was about 80 total, I think six, somewhere between 67 and 80. Some did not come. There was some weather issues. Some people were coming from far away, so they were not able. They were concerned about the weather, which was a legitimate concern every Thursday night for a while. Um, <laughs> but um, yep. we were very pleased with it. And the next couple of slides, I just show some of the partners. So it was nice for me to have this event um, to start building these relationships with our partners. They, I, we need to do something for them and they need employees. So, and they were able to do something with us, for us to talk to our students, give them some interviewing skills, look at resumes and those types of things. So we can build on those, work on the um, internships, work on shadowing days and those. And, and the nice thing that's also come to be the uh, cement contractors are coming into the building we're starting, I had mentioned, at the high school when I started going there, seeing the military there, I remember that when I was in high school, the table with the military, you know, do you want to join the military and the table with the college as well. We finally have started getting other people to come in and the cement contractors are our first. This came from working towards the future care and having these contacts. They're going to be coming in and setting up a table. So that's our goal next year to have it a little more organized by category. But right now we've opened it up to all of those and they're replying to Miss Laura Mata and we're getting that set up. So the kids will just casually be able to go up and talk to these these different companies, um, unions, and all of those opportunities for them. So I'm really excited about that. And the other, the next slide just has some more um, local that we've worked with. The Ohio Means Jobs have worked really well with our Ranger kids. Um, the North Coast Eye Care, just everyone's willing. Um, and we're, we're very proud of our partnerships with them. And then um, just have a few more that we've partnered with. And of course, the city of North Ridgeville has been a great partner with us as well. Uh, another piece that um, I just want to talk about is Ranger Academy, which you all know. And Ranger Academy has looked a little different this year as well because of uh, the, the, the climate and what's happened with COVID. We, we just, we've got all different types of scenarios for different kids. We have a combination of hybrid and some are online. We have some kids with emotional needs that need additional support. And we're trying to at least get them in for, for one or two periods a, a week, some of them start with. But we graduate gradually gotten them up to more so we're doing whatever we can do to make it work for these kids and and i feel like it's it's been successful and it's it's a slow process um we have the am program we have the pm program we have the blended program we're providing social emotional support we have the social workers here that will rachel comes in and works with our kids um we are uh thanks all right. I didn't bring my notes, so thank you. Um, Goodwill <laughs> Industries comes in and works with us. We have um, over 500 classes going on um, this year that are enrolled and completed, and we have more enrolling daily. Our after-school credit recovery, we finally have that going. That is maxed out at 30 kids, I mean, four days a week. We have them starting. We reached out to any kid that is missing a class that needs support and explained to them that you're not on the right track, so we've got to get you on the right track. What can we do? And I'm making calls with those parents if they're getting behind. Um, RHTA is participating in Apex Learning with some of their students that need some credits to add to make their path work for them. Um, and we're doing the eighth grade science enrichment for our students that take physical science. Any, any um, classes that they're, any topics and, that they're missing, we give them a mini little Apex class so they have a combined eighth grade and then they have the physical science so that they're prepared, prepared for all of their science classes. Um, you know, so we're, we're we're just continuing to foster those relationships with the community. Don Sparks and I, we, we call it, we're spreading ranger cheer. We're going around to just, we're just cold calling on businesses and dropping off comments and saying hi and, and offering what we can do for them and what they can do for us and thanking them for their support because they support us in many ways. Um, we're gonna continue to expand the shadowing experience as much as possible and build on that for next year for our students. And then our LCC, which we all know, um, relationship is phenomenal and we are, Making some more, as you all know, the state of the um, North Ridgeville, the CCP has just grown and grown and grown, and we're we're growing that next year, and we're really excited to create some pathways for students to choose from with those CCP, so they can really look at it as a freshman with these graduation plans. With what way do I want to go, and a guided pathway for them. They can change, but at least they have some ideas. So everything's moving along. It's been going very very well, and um, the opportunities are are just out there for our students. And I, I just want to. Oh, you can skip over that. We are all working as a team, coming together, 
is a beginning. So we're all coming together as a team here. We're, we're keeping it all together, working together as progress and working together with the community. It's definitely success for all of us, for our kids, for our community. Um, and I just once again want to thank you guys for giving me this opportunity to work with our students because your commitment to our students is allowing me to help and all of us empower these students to, to sign up for the future. So thank you very much. Ms. Arm Brewster. Ms. Arm Brewster, amazing. <laughs> it's exciting when we see staff up here so excited, so engaged in the success of our students, and we see it on a regular basis. And the business connections and the future fair, and recognizing that students all have their own path, and that we're encouraging them to find that path and pursue that path with support from not just the community, but the school district. And thank you. And clearly you're loving what you're doing and it shows and everything you're doing. So again, thank you so much. Thank you. Well, thank you once again for the opportunity. It's really cool to see these kids, you know, get to make these choices and have these opportunities. I appreciate it. Okay. Well, along the same lines, we have uh, lots of different ways in which we work to support our students. And I'd like to introduce Jackie Vance, who's going to uh, introduce our social workers and tell us a little bit about what they have been up to. Good evening, everyone. Thank you. I am um, so excited to have our two social workers, Tanya Pavlin and Rachel Leia, uh, present to you. I've been wanting them to be introduced and meet you since the beginning of the school year. Um, but I am so appreciative of the fact that we were able to add another social worker to our district to meet the need, um, not only of our growing district, but just the needs of our families, especially um, as we face the challenges after um, the pandemic and as the pandemic continues um, in resolving that. So I would like to introduce um, uh, Rachel and Tanya to share a little bit about what they do so you can have a little perspective into their day to day. Hello, um, thank you for having us today. We're so excited to tell you a little bit about our little department. We like to call ourselves that. So <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know if I know the next slide. Um, so this is the third year we've had social workers in the district. Um, the first year that we have had two of us. Um, which has allowed us to be in every single building at least once per week, if not multiple times a week. Um, Tanya works primarily with our preschool through fifth grade, and I am six through 12. So something we want to give you guys a little exposure to is that in general, social work, school social work is seen as a bridge between school and home and the community. So school, social workers believe that all humans are part of multiple systems, family or home system, school system, community system, et cetera. When a person's systems are in alignment with common positive goals, support is maximized and growth and success can occur. The ultimate goal of school social work is to promote student success. Student success is promoted by partnering with the student's other systems, introducing new systems that may benefit the student, promoting system collaboration to meet the student's needs emotionally, socially, and academically, and then removing any barriers to success. And what that looks like here at North Ridgeville is we kind of have a, different, a lot of different areas, but first is our student support. Um, and we kind of wanted to highlight that we've been doing a lot of check-ins and connections with students and their families. Um, at the high school alone, I have had over 400 individual connections or touch points. Um, and Tanya has had over 300 individual touch points with student families and staff. Um, she has a lot more that she's been doing connecting with staff um, on the kids on the younger end. Um, so that's over 300 a month between ECLC, Liberty, NRAC, and RHTA. Um, we also do home visits to do connections with students or families. Um, I know Lee kind of touched on that. We have a lot of unique students with like unique situations this year, oftentimes because of the pandemic and health reasons. So we uh, provide individual support at home if needed. We provide attendance support and kind of set up incentives to get kids here to school if that's a barrier. Um, we do several social skill development groups. Um, we assist families and students with accessing resources to meet their basic needs. We help with crisis intervention and we also help with homeless student support. 
With the family support, we do support and accessing basic needs, and you all have the report in front of you, so I won't read every bullet point, um, but there are several local organizations that we partner with in order to do that. We also partner with local organizations to provide holiday help. We provide support and parenting tips to families. Definitely those home visits are a big part of our connection and building rapport and establishing trust with families. We do family and parent advocacy, and we definitely do a lot of family engagement opportunities, and we advertise those in a couple ways you'll hear about in a minute. Um, we, also reach, uh, we also reach our uh, teacher, staff, and students, their school support. As you can see, we're part of several different groups and different areas in the various school buildings. Um, the ones to note is we are part of PBIS teams in every building. Um, again, we attend the attendance meetings. We are part of the family engagement committee. I know that's um, one of our goals is to kind of build family engagement as much as we can in the district. Um, we were not original Character Strong champions um, because we were not here last year, but we're part of the Character Strong committee in its um, implementation in the school buildings this year. And we're also working to develop a uh, district-wide suicide risk assessment protocol. With community engagement and partnership, our goal is to collaborate with North Ridgeville community entities and other community supports to provide resources, opportunities, and engagement for our families. We do this by connecting with these entities in as many ways as possible, and several of those are listed there with the different committees that we're part of and groups in the community that we connect with. And as you can see on the next slide, um, there's several church, mental health, social service, and community groups that we're already partnered with. Um, we're hoping to continue to strengthen those partnerships as well as build on um, some of the school groups that we're already part of and kind of be able to link back and forth between the two. Definitely want to highlight things that are new this year. At the beginning of the year, we did a parent engagement survey and we've used this data for planning engagement opportunities throughout the school year. We do a community engagement newsletter bi-monthly, partnering with Sam back there in the back. Um, and this is averaging over 3,500 hits per newsletter. So that goes out twice a month, and both times we're getting that many hits. So people are definitely interested in, in what we're publicizing. Uh, we are part of the Family Engagement Committee, and we're working with the school counselors, Lee Armbruster, and a group of individuals to continue to build opportunities. We are, um, we've established a parent connect group that's for the intensive needs preschool class parents and caretakers. That's a monthly support group at ECLC. It includes a Google Classroom with resources and videos of previous meetings and our guest speakers that have attended. Uh, we also do are planning a family engagement offering. That flyer should go out tomorrow, we think, Sam. Yes, okay. Um, family engagement offering will be on mental health awareness this year. And uh, we have also been part of the Signs of Suicide program with doing student surveys and follow-ups. The ROCKS group is new this year, Linkage with Heart and Soul, a community engagement um, opportunity, and the CARES project is a Lorain County project that we're a part of. We also want to highlight um, several of the trainings that we've been part of this year. Most of them, both of us have done, a few just one or the other. Um, but some of the highlights um, were part of the homeless trainings, We've both been part of PBIS trainings. Um, we've had some suicide trainings, um, and we've also done some cross-agency trainings just to make sure that we're updated on everything that's going on in our Lorain County community so that we know where to send our families if they need something. We have big hopes for the future, and many of them uh, are dependent on saying goodbye to COVID forever. So we're hopeful, hopeful for that. Um, but we'd like to expand our family engagement opportunities for in-person and regular occurrence doing trainings, family fun, and community service opportunities. We would love to continue the drive-in movie night as a new tradition in North Ridgeville. We're hopeful that that will be an ongoing tradition. We'd like to continue building partnerships with community organizations. We'd like to increase school, family, and community awareness of the support that we can offer and strengthen community partnerships so that we can offer wraparound support here at school, meaning that we would support the whole child and whole family through linkages with providers and ongoing communication. So we just want to say thank you for having us here to share a little bit about what we do. As you can see, that was kind of a lot of stuff that we do. Um, the life of a social worker is never the same from day to day and kind of do a little bit of everything. Um, but if you guys have any questions or, you know, would like to know more, we definitely have to talk further. And our contact information is there on the flyer that we have plastered all over every building, every council has to have these, every open house. So um, easy to access us through email. Um, we also both have numbers that can text, so families do a lot of that. Thank you.
I think the theme here tonight is that it truly does take a village. And between the partnerships that you know Lee is continuing to build and the ongoing support and partnerships that our social workers have been able um, to provide for our families throughout uh, this pandemic in the last year has been incredible. And the work that they are doing ultimately will impact our students and what they are able to do as they move into their future. So thank you all for everything that you do and for working to support our students and staff. We thank you. That concludes the super question. Well, you know, on the backside of the pandemic and all the fun things going on in the school, I like these meetings. <laughs> <laughs> Not a lot better. Not a lot better. <laughs> All right, any announcements? Is there any announcements this evening? Okay, seeing none, we'll move on to hearing of the public. Here's an opportunity for the public to address the Board of Education. Uh, please approach the podium, sign in, state your name, and seeing none, we'll move on to the consent agenda. It's recommended that the Board of Education approve the consent agenda resolution as presented. Second. Okay. Second. Murphy. Is there any discussion? Roll call, please. Mrs. Tamira. Yes. Mrs. McCarthy. Yes. Mr. Grigsby. Yes. Mrs. Saxon. Yes. Mr. Baca. Yes. <clears throat> finance audit report, Ms. McCarthy. Thank you, Mr. Baca. We have one item for our consideration under the finance audit report. It is recommended that the Board of Education approve the financial report and report of interest and investments for February. 2022. I move to approve this finance audit report in one reading. Second. Moved by Ms. McCarthy, seconded by myself. Is there any discussion? Oh, please. Mrs. McCarthy? Yes. Mr. Baca? Yes. Mr. Grigsby? Yes. Mrs. Saxon? Yes. Mrs. Tamira? Yes. You want a human resources report, Mr. Grigsby? You have a few to consider the human resources report. One certified staff resignation, three support staff resignations, three special project supplemental contracts, three support staff appointments, NREA supplemental contract. I move to approve the human resources items in one reading. Second. Mr. Rigby, second by Ms. McCarthy. Is there any discussion? Roll call, please. Mr. Grigsby. Yes. Mrs. McCarthy. Yes. Mrs. Saxon? Yes. Mrs. Tamira? Yes. Mr. Baca? Yes. It was recommended to the Board of Education enter into executive session to discuss the appointment, employment, dismissal, discipline, promotion, and compensation of public employees and matters related to negotiations of public employees. There will be no action to follow. Moved. Second. Moved by Ms. Saxon, second by Ms. Tamira. Roll call, please. Mrs. Saxon? Yes. Mrs. Tamira? Yes. Mr. Grigsby? Yes. Mrs. McCarthy? Yes. Mr. Baca? Yes. Thank you, everybody.